Welcome to Gut Talk TV by DAB, a YouTube channel focused on closing the knowledge and communication gaps in gut health. Please read our disclaimer below and press the subscribe button. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Jake Vigan. Hello, I'm Dr. Yunan. We are gastroenterologists from Australia. And today we've invited Dr. Paul Clark back with us again to discuss the management of NASH and the prognosis. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me. Hello everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. So Paul, just um, continuing from the previous video. Yeah. So let's say the patient's just been diagnosed with NASH or fatal liver disease, the other term. Um, what should they expect? How should they manage their fatty liver disease? Okay, I, I, I think, I, and I, I mightn't have mentioned it the first time, I think the first thing also to do when you've got a diagnosis of fatty liver disease is to make sure there's nothing else. Mm -hmm. you know? So it is, it is a diagnosis of exclusion, and it depends how comfortable you are with the patient's risk factor profile about how hard you would go to prove the diagnosis. Mm -hmm but you should really rule out other causes. There are some important causes like Wilson's disease that can lead to fatty liver disease and other things, but there's a sort of pretty well-worked algorithm to go through and make sure there's nothing else going. But saying we've done that and, mm -hmm. and we've got the patient sitting in front of us, my usual conversation would run something like this. Um, the fatty liver disease is a sign that your liver um, has the metabolic syndrome. So it's a, a liver feature of the metabolic syndrome. Your, um, your liver's a kind of canary in the mind, the phrase means that you know it's a warning system to tell you that it's, it's dealing with too much metabolic stress. Usually it's not the problem, it's usually a symptom of other metabolic features. So really it's, I, I try and encourage patients to rally, to, you know, to call to arms, to say, hey, this is a problem. Your body's responded by absorbing fat and enlarging your liver. You know, this is a real problem. Something's going wrong here. You need to adjust what you're doing. And uh, usually the first sort of thing that's apparent to patients, at least, is, is weight problems. So, you know, there's usually a combination of diet and exercise that we usually prescribe, usually starting with basic, you know, government recommendations, WHO recommendations about exercise. So five episodes of exercise, 30 minutes duration to breathlessness mm -hmm. per week. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and a healthy diet, not trying to push too hard with things like the very low carbohydrate mm -hmm. diet, but just trying to get them to start thinking about what they're eating reducing carbohydrates, trying to substitute other food groups and being conscious of the triggers that people use to eat, you know, mm -hmm. eating because they're sad, eating because they're thirsty, all those sort of things, trying to be really upfront about that. Uh, in patients with other risk factors for metabolic syndrome, things like diabetes, we really want to try and get the HbA1c normal. People with dyslipidemia, I want to see the LDL normal, I want to try and adjust the triglycerides down if I can. We think these things help. Statins probably have other effects on the liver, you know, but, but trying to control dyslipidemia is important. And, uh, and most of that can be mediated via weight loss in the first instance, particularly mm. for people on that sort of less severe end of the spectrum of metabolic syndrome. So I really do push uh, weight loss early on. And involvement with a dietitian is really important there. I think somebody who can really reinforce some of the messages about in intake and, mm -hmm. and try and match that to output. I usually don't try and do both those things at the same time, but at least introduce one of those concepts more exercise, mm -hmm. more out, or, or less in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it sounds like the mainstay is uh, weight loss through diet and exercise, as you've mentioned, and then management of the other factors of the metabolic syndrome that, that might be coexisting. Yeah. Really, that's the main thing mm -hmm. for management of fatty liver disease. And so we try to treat it aggressively when we diagnose it because we want to avoid some of the sequelae that happen with NASH. So can you run us through just the kinds of things we're trying to prevent? Yeah, and I think it's important to be upfront that we're, it's very difficult for a patient with fatty liver disease to know exactly which way their prognosis, their path leads. We know patients with more advanced features of the metabolic syndrome and specifically diabetes are much more at risk of developing more advanced liver disease. Really we talk about liver disease in, in all the same way. You can have a damaged liver, mm -hmm. an injured liver, an inflamed liver, but it's the cirrhosis and the fibrosis that we want to prevent. If you remember from the first video we talked about non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, this inflamed liver. And that irritation of the liver that leads to inflammatory cells trying to repair and heal an injury leads to laying down of fibrosis, much the same as you might get a scar on your skin. And that scarred ribbon is not normal skin, it's scar tissue. And that's exactly the same as the liver. The liver is not, it's not normal liver tissue, it's scar tissue. And over time, you can develop what we call cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is a change, a nodular change in the, in the structure of the liver, and at a microscopic level, you lose the hepatocytes, the liver cells that do all the work of the liver. Mm. Eventually, you can get cirrhosis, which is a change in the appearance of the liver, 
And if that goes on further, you get what we call decompensated cirrhosis. That's where patients might present with symptoms like lethargy. They might get yellow under the eyes, maybe even yellow in the skin. They might get fatigued. They might notice that some of the muscle bulk up in the top of their arms or their legs starts to go. And you know, in more advanced cases, they might even get fluid in the belly. That's called ascites. So that's what we're really trying to prevent. That's decompensated liver disease. But that's the process that can happen. And understanding that and being able to prognosticate early as best we can and watch a patient with fatty liver disease and make sure if they're progressing that we're watching them and trying to do something about it. Anytime that rally point of progression occurs, we want to be coming back and saying, hang on, we talked about weight loss, we've talked about adjusting your metabolic, now you've, got, you've gone on and got more progressive, what, what else can we do? And so it's always about trying to engage the patient, keep them on side, recognise that you know, this is a difficult problem. If it was easy to lose weight, we wouldn't have an obesity problem in our community. So recognise that you know it's about being on the side with them and, and taking them on, being on their journey with them. I think is a really important part of it. So I think Paul mentioned a lot of important things. And if you've just been diagnosed with the fatty liver disease or NASH, um, keep in mind with your doctor going through a journey together and address all these metabolic issues so that you don't end up with advanced liver disease. <laughs> <laughs> and Sure. So thank you very much for uh, tuning in today. Don't forget, if you can leave any comments or questions below, and to press the subscribe button. And we'll see you for the next one.